in the information information session for uh, winter games so mike thank you for uh, hitting the record button i forgot to give you the cue there so i appreciate that um my name is steve bennett senior director of sports and competition here with the sports department at special mix maryland again want to welcome everyone um as you see here um the big word tentative will be written on many of these slides and those that it's not um written in in this type of format um just to make everyone aware everything presented tonight is tentative but we we felt it was a, a good opportunity to get in front of you guys as coaches and and give some basic information on an overall uh, general perspective of what to be prepared for at winter games as we haven't been um, at wisp in about 13 years give or take um so again as always this webinar as you uh, saw is being recorded we will post the the webinar slides as well as send them out to you but we'll post them as well as the recording on the coaches resource page so we'll go ahead and get started um we do uh if you have questions feel free to put them in the chat function um, mike will be uh, monitoring those questions for the most part throughout the the webinar session and uh, but this this session is is not just to give information it's also to get feedback from you guys um, suggestions, questions. Uh, if you have questions, no guarantee we'll have an answer, but we'll at least address the question. Um, but again, hopefully you'll find this information um, good and, and worthwhile at this time. So um, as we as I said, you know, the purpose tonight is basically just to give some information as we know it now, knowing that um, we as a, as a state and our management team are still working through some details for the games. Um, registration will obviously indicate some of the timing of the schedules and things of that nature. But again, wanted to give some brief information um, so you know some things going into it as we have more informative sessions and webinars coming up in the future. Um, so it, just some things we'll go over tonight are, are some of the general maps of the general area uh, where WISP is located, uh, basic overall schedule of the games, opening ceremony information, some housing and registration, as well as meals, uh, details that uh, Mike will cover, um, talk about the family reception, um, the social and the dance, um, some miscellaneous general items, and then we'll talk, um, Elizabeth, uh, our sports director, will uh, cover some of the Alpine specific information, and then we'll, um, at the end, as we always do, We'll give you a list of the coaches resource page and other resources you can utilize. So uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, WISP is located in the far west part of the state of Maryland. Uh, most people, or at least when I go out there from where I live, I come up 70, um, hit 68 and um, head on out and then take a little detour down on 20 or 219 down to the WISP resort. So um this is the basic information as you come down to 19 uh you turn in here takes you right down to marsh road marsh hill road and right into the uh, wisp resort um so again it's really great that we're all able to to house right there at the location presents a great atmosphere for the winter games more camaraderie and just some excitement um whitetail was great but we are also excited to continue our trainings with Whitetail and also have the Winter Games um, in our home state at WISP. So this is just more of a zoomed in um, location. So um, this is the main hotel uh, where everyone, most of the rooms, if not all the rooms are located. Um, the main entrance is here. And then uh, there is some parking located back here. But uh, that's probably going to be mostly for snowshoeing. That's uh, where the snowshoeing competition will be over in this area. We'll utilize some of the yurts. Um, and then there's main parking. You'll see on the next slide um, right down here. There's a lot of general parking and everything else. Um, on Sunday, um, depending on general public, um, there may be um, patience needed for parking. Um, and then Monday and Tuesday, uh, we anticipate the parking lots opening up and uh, you can get closer parking depending on when you arrive. Um, but this is the McHenry Lodge you'll see on the next portion. This is where the dining uh, for breakfast, lunch, and dinners will take place, as well as the opening ceremony and the dance. Um, and um, again, I'll go to the next slide here. So th again, this is the main hotel. Um, pull down in here, you can offload right into the main entrance. Um, this is where the control center will be. 
in the barns room. We'll have um, some signage indicating where that is. We'll also have some additional meeting rooms um, as needed in the Morris room, Crawford room, and some other locations throughout the hotel. Um, and in the in the main lobby, once you come into the main entrance, that's where the registration will take place um, for coaches and HODs, et cetera. Um, Jane Dunn will be set up there to distribute keys and things of that nature for your hotel rooms, et cetera. Uh, but you can come through, when you come through there, obviously the rooms will be here. And there's a corridor down to walk through the hotel, um, get down to the main uh, McHenry Lodge where a lot of the activities will be taking place. Um, you'll see here the Timbers room, that's where the family reception will be in the lower uh, level. Um, that will be on Monday night during the dance. And uh, for those of you who've been there before, or if you haven't been there, this is again, the main lodge. And looking out, this is all a big window, a frame looking out to the slope. So it's very conducive and uh, uh, really nice setup as you can see all the slopes, et cetera. So as we talk about the overall general schedule, um, hopefully it's not a surprise. The games are the 26th of February through the 28th. Um, the 26th is the arrival date. And for time trials, uh, you can see in the afternoon, the time trials will be uh, in place there. Uh, no lunch is provided on the 26th, so just to make you aware of that. Um, then we will provide, starting with the meals, dinner on Saturday, or on, excuse me, on Sunday night, um, and then leading into the opening ceremony after the dinner. Um, there will be a slight turnover, um, partial um, space of the McHenry Lodge where the meals and the opening ceremony will be. Uh, do a little bit of a switch, a changeover of the room. So as a reminder, and we'll, we'll touch on this as we get closer to the games as well in the, in the additional webinars, uh, but get in, get dinner, get out so that others can get in. And um, as needed, we uh, will uh, be changing some of the tables and chairs to get ready for the opening ceremony. Um, the opening ceremony will again will be Sunday night. Moving into Monday, breakfast will be available in the McHenry Lodge. Uh, we'll show you a layout there. Uh, there will be a buffet style for all official registered delegation members to go through the, the meal lines there in the McHenry Lodge. Um, after breakfast, obviously, we'll get into the competition components, um, a lunch break, and depending on your schedules, dinner that evening on Monday, uh, leading into the social dance, and as well as the family reception um, Monday evening. Tuesday, kind of the same kind of schedule for breakfast, get up, go to breakfast, go to competition, get your awards, have lunch, um, and just uh, rejoice in, in the great event that uh, your athletes and partners, yourselves as coaches, um, were able to participate in at the Winter Games. Um, so as I mentioned, the opening ceremony will be February 26th, that's Sunday evening after time trials, after dinner. Um, again, it'll be in that big room. It's a really nice room. Um, but for the opening ceremony, talk with your head of delegation or your county director. Um, we'll do the representative parade as we've done in the past. So it'll be one, one athlete, one partner, or two athletes, whatever um, the delegation um, chooses, as well as a coach to walk in to represent your program. Everybody else will be uh, seated in the seats um, looking at the stage. So um, just because you want Alpine to go, if you also have snowshoers, uh, work with your head of delegation so that they have a uh, good representation of your program uh, as they uh, walk into the opening ceremony. So uh, as we continue to dial things in, um, this is kind of a, a general layout that Anna McCauley, our director of opening ceremonies, has put together. Um, so the, the room, as, as we talked about at snowshoeing webinar right before this one, uh, this room is, is much bigger. Um, so kind of looking at the stage will be um, up against the windows, looking out to the mountain, okay? Uh, so the stage will be located in that area. This is where I was talking about where the delegation seating will be for those who are not uh, the selected members to walk in to represent your program. Um, back here, there's a food court. Um, just for general purposes, um, for general public, they will be able to come through here and, and uh, for families and other spectators or other general public um, at WISP, they'll be able to go to the, through the regular cafe or food court lines. Uh, those officially de uh, registered delegates 
we'll have a buffet style line to go through. Um, and the seating in this area for meals will be designated for uh, officially uh, official members of Winter Games. But back in the back here, this is where uh, you're walking from the hotel, passing the pool, passing the workout facility, coming in. That's where the torch will be brought in. Um, come down the center aisle of the delegation seating, head out the exit ramp, um, going outside to light the cauldron right outside of the windows. Um, the pipe and drape is basically so that we can designate um, the back part of the room um, will still be open and that's portion that we won't need to turn over um, leading into the opening ceremony. So if you're around and you uh, we need some help, we would appreciate any assistance if needed uh, to help turn that room over, but um, I think we'll be all good and set. This There's a, another back room. It's the Whispers room. It's a um, kind of a closed-in space, but that's where the members leading into the opening ceremony will, will um, congregate and make sure that we have the representatives that we need, and then they'll uh, proceed in for the stage, for the recognition, and, and head back to their seats. Uh, but that's where we'll get make sure everybody's in place before the opening ceremony begins. So with that, I will turn it over to Mike. Um, he will address some registration, housing, and meals, mm -hmm. and then we'll get to some miscellaneous stuff, and then let Elizabeth mm -hmm. take over on some Alpine-specific information. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so this is just a reminder for folks. A lot of this your area is dealing with, your area leadership, um, but want to make sure folks are aware of this. Uh, there are two different options in terms of registration fee. Uh, we certainly hope most, if not all, members of delegations take advantage of the uh, uh, utilizing the uh, Special Olympics Maryland provided housing. Um, that fee that's to your area, not to the individual athlete or delegation member, is $195 per delegation. There is also an option, though, staying all, not utilizing the housing we provide, uh, which some folks choose to do. Uh, that's at $120. Regardless of which uh, category you are, if you will, the only difference is whether you're getting housing from Special Olympics Maryland or you're doing housing on your own or if you're in Garrett County um, going home. Um, so, uh, so regardless of that, you're going to get the lift tickets and rentals that you need for your assigned sport. You're going to get the meals from uh, Sunday through uh, dinner on Sunday through lunch on Tuesday, social activities, and so on. In addition, as part of the registration, and again, whoever is handling this for your delegation, you as an individual coach most likely are not going in to GMS. Um, I think I only see one or two of the GMS users on the call right now. Uh, but uh, everybody in your delegation will be designated as one of the um, roles, if you will, that you see there. Um, as a note, however, uh, that to be, um, regardless of what your delegation puts in for you, uh, if um, to be included as a head coach, uh, a coach, or an assistant coach, um, you must have your, your uh, sport certification uh, for that proper level current uh, through the Winter Games. Anybody, if your delegation puts you in, and that's not the case, we're going to change it. Uh, change that role to a volunteer, you won't be credentialed as a coach. Um, and again, the cert sports certification for I think two or three years now um, has been available and is available on the coach resource page uh, and indicates you can see the uh, your, sat your status there, uh, as well as transcripts of the courses that we have record of you having taken. Um, so uh, if you're not sure, go and check on that uh, and see. One note, some folks who have taken say, a, uh, in this case, an Alpine uh, coaches course, if you haven't taken uh, Coaching Special Olympics Athletes, or CSOA, um, you won't be able to earn uh, an actual coach sports certification. That is the underlying uh, require. that is an absolute necessity uh, to either earn a sports certification, or if you had one previously, because this came into play about six years ago, um, so to, in order to renew uh, one from uh, a previous time, you need to complete that. Uh, if you don't complete it, you can take 20 Alpine courses. You're not going to get uh, either earn or renew your sports certification. Um, next up, Steve. Um, so just a couple of the reminders here. Um, uh, the We've extended the deadline to get any outstanding forms or certifications into Special Olympics Maryland or here to headquarters. 
uh, to January 26th. That's about two weeks later than uh, had been there, uh, or we'll be deleting you from the delegation there. Um, and keep in mind also that those forms need to be submitted through what we call our standard process that we've established and had in place for the last five years or so. Your area leadership uploads that information um, uh, to our network with that. Um, then also, and again, your GMS person will do this, but you need to provide, as the coach, need to provide the information to him or her. So if you don't, if you don't know who your GMS person is right now, find that out from your area leadership. Uh, but we need to have the competitive events for all your athletes uh, and unified partners uh, entered into GMS no later than February 6th. Um, that said, when it comes time and we have the time trials on site on Sunday at Winter Games, there will be the opportunity to change the um, the event or the level within the event for the finals. Uh, just uh, have to be sure that they get uh, an appropriate time trial for that event. We know particularly for Alpine, somewhat for snowshoeing, but particularly for Alpine, getting out there and seeing the course and actually skiing the course can make a difference a lot of times as to whether somebody's going to be uh, at the intermediate level or the advanced level uh, and may also affect what what uh, races they do. Um, On-site registration at WISP uh, will take place in that main lobby, as uh, Steve indicated. Um, uh, we'll have a packet there for uh, each head coach. Um, that has the materials, the information, et cetera, that you need for time trials. That'll include uh, your bibs and uh, and anything else along those lines. And you're going to use the bibs throughout, but it's what you need to get going there. Um, and then we'll give you the additional information after time trials are done. Um, and then also there'll be a packet for the overall delegation uh, that your head of delegation will pick up with housing meals, all that type of stuff. Your head of delegation can make the decision as to whether they want to get all the packets or they want to wait and let you pick that up. Communication is key there. So um, find out how they want to do it. Uh, we want to be accommodating or, or flexible to let whatever works work for folks. Uh, Steve, let's see. So then with housing, a couple of points. Uh, so Jane Dunn, again, will be coordinating with each area program. Uh, she'll be reaching out in the next couple of days with that. Um, as has been the case, uh, for um, for quite some time for uh, uh, any pretty much any event where we have uh, we're providing housing, we have what we call a three to one ratio. I'm not going to go of three athletes. Uh, for every three athletes, you get one supervisory person, which is a coach and uh, a chaperone, a volunteer, someone down the line. Um, not going to go into all the details and so on on that, but did want to make that point and also to make sure folks know. There's a reason. It's not just arbitrary. It's not because we don't want to pay. The main reason, quite frankly, is to ensure that every athlete uh, has the opportunity to stay slopeside. Uh, and um, if we don't have that kind of a restriction on that, we can't accommodate everybody there. Similarly, at Towson uh, for summer games, because you run into it there. And so everybody, we can stay on the campus with the housing that we have allotted to us there. So it's not arbitrary. There's a reason for that. Uh, it's actually more generous, if you will, uh, than uh, the standard Special Olympics nationwide, uh, which is a four to one ratio. So, um, but anyhow, so uh, your area leadership knows that if anybody, you know, work it out with them. Uh, and uh, if you choose not to um, use the housing provided, again, there's a difference in cost, but there is the inconvenience, unfortunately, of having to travel there because uh, travel from wherever you're staying because we have all of the hotel rooms and suites booked for WISP. They're all reserved. They will not um, uh, book a room on Monday night or, or Sunday night or Monday night to anyone other than actually through Jane. Uh, and uh, we will be utilizing every one of the rooms that we have uh, there. Um, so, but again, there, it is a resort area. There's lots of other hotels if folks wish to take advantage of that. Uh, we'll be having delegations check in to their rooms and such on Sunday, uh, uh, the 26th in the afternoon, and we'll check out on Tuesday, uh, the 28th, they'll have to check out of the rooms for the most part in the mid to late morning. We are working with WISP to see about having uh, a couple rooms available for either each delegation or a group of delegations. If they're small, we may cluster a few together so that we have changing rooms available and also a place to put luggage, quite frankly, uh, on uh, early on Sunday before the rest of the rooms are available. Again, they're turning the whole hotel 
So it takes a while to get all the rooms available. So having something available early on Sunday, uh, and then also, I forgot to fix this one, Steve, but uh, late on uh, Tuesday afternoon, uh, since we'll be have to be out of most of the rooms by, I think it's like 11 o'clock or so, and things are still going on. Uh, just as a heads up, there are different room configurations, um, uh, both whether you're in the tower section or the inn section. They're all nice rooms, but some uh, have space for two people, some have space for three people, and such, and Jane will work out that, um, you know, exactly how the housing has to go uh, with your individual area leaders or head of delegation with that. And then also as a note, um, uh, WISP, uh, as most hotels and such, uh, does have challenges in terms of staffing and such, uh, they will not be cleaning rooms during our stay. They'll, they will be clean when you get in there on Sunday, so that'll be cleaned. But on Monday night uh, or Monday and Tuesday, they won't be cleaned. That said, um, there will be extra towels available. You need to have, just have to go to the front desk of the hotel uh, if you need them. Um, uh, but uh, again, it's, um, uh, it, it's, it's great to be slope side with this. And I think there's one more slide, it might be on meals. Thank you, Steve. So uh, all the delegation meals will be held in the McHenry Lodge. Uh, as was noted, um, for our meals, we will not be going through the food court area. There will be a designated buffet set up uh, for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner uh, in that area. If you saw the, if you remember from the slide Steve showed with opening ceremony, uh, sort of along the back stretch there is where the buffet will be set up. Uh, so, that, um, so our delegation members won't be going through the food court. I mean, if you want to do it at your on your own cost, that's fine for you. Uh, and family members for lunch will be able to do that. But um, uh, our, our the the food that we're providing, uh, you need to go uh, through our buffet line. Uh, we're still working out the specifics of tracking and uh, whether your credential handles get you through there or whatever. Uh, we likely will be doing meal shifts for some meals at a minimum very likely doing it for Sunday night, because uh, even with the time trials going on during the day, Sunday, historically, there just seems everybody wants to go to lunch, dinner at the same time. Um, and uh, we want to we want to try to spread that out. So there's not a massive line there. Hopefully this will help. Um, and then as Steve has indicated that for some meals, it may just be Sunday night. Um, but we may have to have folks um, you know, be pretty efficient, if you will, in eating and such, or we may have to have you seat in, in certain areas of the room that aren't getting turned because there is a portion where we will have to turn the space over, if you will, uh, to get things set up for opening ceremony with that. Uh, then during lunch, uh, the general public uh, will also be uh, uh, purchasing lunch in the McHenry Lodge. Um, uh, and such. Uh, they are working to get it set up so that uh, the general public will go through the food court line and then will be directed to sit somewhere other than in McHenry Lodge. There's not very many people from the general public coming through there on Monday or Tuesday, though. Uh, and then they're shut down to the general public also during our dinner and our breakfast times. Um, so, um, yeah, so mentioned about getting there uh, in the right line. Uh, and then at this point, we don't have any range arrangements for delegation members to purchase meals at WISP other than lunch, where they can go through the public line uh, with that. Um, there's a lot of uh, dining options and such in the McHenry area that uh, can accommodate their needs. Some of the feedback from uh, the earlier session uh, asked us to look and see if we can arrange it so that family members uh, can at least sit during lunch with their delegation or with their athletes. But um, we'll see uh, what we can do with that. Uh, and then just as a reminder, because it's noted a couple different places, delegations are on their own uh, for lunch on Sunday. We are not providing lunch on Sunday. And I think, Steve, it goes back to you. Yep. Um, we did have one question come in. And Elizabeth, if, if I'm incorrect, let me know. I don't think it's covered on the slides as we are still working out some details with WISP in regards to Alpine and um, picking up the rentals and all that. Um, I, we're hoping it'll be a similar type of thing that we do at Whitetail um, as far as the lift tickets and all that. The one other thing I do want to mention um, for Alpine skiing is for the, there are ski uh, lockers that are available for Alpine skiing for storage of Alpine skiing equipment overnight. 
Um, those will be given by Jane Dunn along the the base the the room keys are kind of your swipe uh, typical hotel room key, um, and then there is an actual key that'll be designated for your lockers where you can store your ski equipment overnight. Right. So yeah, really there's a designated locker for each hotel room. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. So good point. Good point. Just wanted to let you guys know that uh, we didn't cover that in snowshoeing because they don't they can take their snowshoes right up to the room. But uh, for all the uh, Alpine uh, personnel, if you so choose, which we encourage because we don't want the skis and everything to be brought through the hotel and up to your rooms and all that kind of stuff. So utilize those lockers. Um, so as we talked about, the family reception um, will be in the Timbers room in the lower level over near the McHenry Lodge. Um, and that again is designated for family members. That's not for athletes and partners and anybody who wants to go down. Um, uh, that is spe specifically for family members to have the camaraderie of other family members, get to know each other, um, just have a nice, uh, good time talking with each other and, and and talking about the day of events, et cetera. Um, and then the dance that will be happening at the same time as the dance, the dance, um, as noted here, um, we know that it's a hot topic for a lot of people. What's the theme? Um, the theme is the Oscars. So, um, it's kind of like, uh, your glam and glitz and everything and dress up and, um, we're maybe having to like a red carpet walk in and things of that nature. So, um, and we will not be allowing folks to reenact the slap. Uh, yeah, part no, of the no. dance. okay so don't just can strike that out the out of your uh repertoire yeah so um good stuff there so um moving into some other miscellaneous items and pieces of information um there is a pool there at, at the wisp um that won't be available for anybody um with us and through winter games um, please make note of that. Um, there is a workout facility if somebody wants to go in and use that, as long as it's open, um, that's available. But we strongly encourage if that if there are athletes or whatever, um, that a coach or someone from your uh, delegation joins them to make sure there's no injuries um, or overstressing, um, anything of that nature. So um, for medical, uh, we will have medical as we always do overnight on site in the hotel and also throughout the games. Uh, basically for you guys as Alpine um, individuals, uh, the main source will be the ski patrol as has been at Whitetail, et cetera, um, while you're out on the slopes and things of that nature. If anything happens um, within the lodge or things of that nature, uh, we will have medical on site ready to address those. We will also be providing once we get dialed in with our housing, and some other information we will give you, as we always do, the overnight phone numbers for those in case something happens overnight, as well as what rooms those medical people um, are being housed in for the overnight services. Um, just as a reminder, you know, if there is an, a, a pressing extreme emergency, don't hesitate. Call 911 first, then follow the other protocols, and we'll get people up there as soon as possible um, based on the situation. So I uh, just wanted to make note of that. Um, with that, um, we'll go ahead and I will hand it over to Elizabeth. I don't know if um, anyone else from the Alpine team was able to join tonight, but um, we will hand it over to Elizabeth and talk yeah. about some Alpine specific information. Yeah, the only one on the Alpine team that I see, uh, if we want to count George and his George Hergenhan and his okay. consulting role, um, uh, that uh, um, it looks like the only one who's with us. Gotcha. So again, uh, basic information here. Um, this is for a chance for you guys and, and ladies to um, ask questions, give suggestions, etc. We were not going to have all the information. And um, Elizabeth, first time uh, with Alpine, so uh, she's been doing great. And I will turn it over to Elizabeth. Yep. So just a brief agenda. Uh, we'll be going over the venue map layout, planned courses. Um, very tentative in regards to snow conditions can change up until the day prior, um, but these are kind of what, when we went on our site visit, George and a couple other members um, were actually able to ski some of these um, hills and were able to get an idea. Um, basic schedule of the time trials, go over staging, um, coaches meeting, awards, and then some miscellaneous at the end. 
Um, so I have two pictures. This is just their general um, trail map here. Um, novice and super glide are marked twice. As you can see, they are closer to the base of the mountain on the right hand side, um, both in their Sunset Boulevard kind of learning center area. Um, to the right hand side, what's highlighted over with the glide and super glide are two magic carpets. Um, so we'll be utilizing those for those athletes. And then, um, yeah, in front of that event tent, which may or may not be there at the time of um, the games. Um, novice at the moment, we have planned here up at the top of their learning center, Sunset Boulevard. Um, athletes will be utilizing the three magic carpets to get to the top um, and then skiing down the course. Um, there was some discussion and something that we want your input with as coaches, um, as you know your athletes best, um, is if novice wants to be moved over to the possum course, which is the long course to the left in between novice and super g um, it is a long course but it is one of their easiest courses um, we would they would be taking chair three which is next to the advanced course in the main chair that um, our athletes will be utilizing throughout the game um, for alpine and be skiing down almost to where the novice is highlighted um, the portion, because some of the um, thought with that was that the novice area where it, in the learning center um, might be too simple and too easy for some of our novice athletes. And with coaches staging, um, if you have an athlete that needs longer time getting to that start point on possum, you have that time accessible. So it's we were, we were split between the Alpine team while we were there. Um, I might send out a survey, um, so it's anonymous, um, as to what you think with the novice being either on the carpets in their learning center or um, being taking the chair and having a longer ski. But if you know your skier will have to take breaks on that length of a ski, um, it's not difficult. It's just that it is a long portion to get to that start point where we plan. Um, it looks like uh, our consultant wanted to chime in, George. Yeah, I was just curious. Um, just to be clear, Elizabeth, where would the actual, if you use awesome, where would the actual race course be? At about, the top or at the bottom? At the bottom, about where Novice is highlighted on the larger map. Um, mm -hmm. Right near, yeah, right about where Steve's mouse is at the moment. Um, so they would be skiing pretty far down to get to the um, start portion. Mm -hmm. And that was the main concern with using possum was the amount that would have to be skied to get to the race. Yeah, and, okay. and just because I wasn't up there, George, and I didn't obviously get on the, on the slopes. Uh, if you take that chair up, it looks like there's it's green and then goes to blue to get down to possum. Or is this kind of green going out to get- No, it's, it's green all the way. It, okay. It, yeah, it, it's green all the way. Um, I think that blue goes into the other one that they're going to do super dealing. I think that's where the blue goes. Yeah. Uh, but you now, I possum is a is a beginner trail all the way. Yeah. Um, and against my better judgment, Mr. Bird, I see you have a <laughs> hand up. If if you want to if you want to uh, ask your question, you need to you need to unmute yourself, sir. It's going to be an easy one. Um, looking at where that novice trail is, are there three magic carpets there? Yes. yes. Can you actually still get to that course on a magic carpet? No. I looked at some other photos that we had there, and there are barriers to the left. Mm -hmm. of, ah. um, yeah, um, that that aren't shown on this, this map. But um, we went into some photos that we took when that was you are not the first one to ask. Actually, Melissa asked me that yesterday. Yeah, I have because my biggest concern is that that is going to be a pretty good run mm -hmm. all the way down just to get to the course. And then if they have to run the course twice, they're going to have to go back and do that again. Yeah. So, so my thought going into it was that it's a lot of new stuff happening for the athletes this season, including a new sports director for Alpine. Um, so, <laughs> but, uh, 
going with the um, novice course at Sunset Boulevard this this turnaround with it being the first year back at WISP in so long. And then giving the athletes and you guys as coaches the availability to ski possum and see if maybe next year this is a something that we transition to from seeing if we can move novice to possum next year. And you guys have a good idea of what that skiing terrain is like, as well as your athletes would have the possibility if they are unsure of that as well, they would also have that possibility. But with, with all the new stuff happening this year, very few athletes have skied these courses um, as comparison to whitetail where they were doing it for years in, um, years I, in a row. One, one final observation. I, I don't think there's that much of a difference that point but they're pretty much similar okay similar grades at that point yeah so and it's again, it's actually a little bit misleading if, if i understood correctly and, and this is not drawn to scale but if i understood correctly we were only going to go up to this the first two carpets we did not have to go all the way up to the third carpet um yeah i marked it as course. the first two just in case, but yeah, we'd only have to utilize two of the three carpets that yeah. are offered. Um, Steve, if you can actually go forward one and then we'll come back to this. This is a little bit better idea of where Super Glide and Novice are. Um, just to give you that idea again, Super Glide is parallel and Novice, you can kind of see two of the three um, magic carpets there that we would utilize and then possum is that one in between um and then if you yeah so um you can see they are similar similar grades and this picture kind of gives you a little bit better idea of what those courses look like um in photo form um i hope that there's that much snow on the ground come <laughs> winter games but nothing's a guarantee um so if you can go back one more steve and go back to the trail map and then here, um, Super G will be the entire WISP trail that's highlighted next to, yeah, that big long green one. Um, advanced is Squirrel Cage, which is actually from the McHenry Lodge and where kind of everything's happening. Um, you see right out to this chair three and Squirrel Cage um, pretty well. And then up at the top of the mountain, still in the front of the mountain, we'll be utilizing two different courses for time trials and then intermediate races. So intermediate and advanced is going to be this little cutoff. We're going to um, completely close off on Sunday while the general public is there for um, intermediate and advanced time trials. That is Roadrunner um, right there. And they will ski down um, the WISP trail. And then for the um, intermediate races, they will be up at the top. That trail is called Muskrat, and they will be coming down, um, coming down the, uh, there's a blue, blue one over there, I believe, called Road Run or something, or Boulder Run. Um, yeah, and where, where you're pointing, there's a trail yep. down to lift one. Yep. And as of right now, they have told us that they will have lift one running on Monday and Tuesday, um, which is why we are utilizing muskrat because that is the chair um, that goes right up to that course. And then here you can see the Super G coming down as well as advancing kind of the proximity. Um, and as noted, the intermediate courses are not visible, but they'll be skiing down the leftmost side that I've highlighted in a different color since it's not an actual course. Um, and then you can kind of get an idea of where the lodge is kind of central to all of these courses as well. Um, so just going over again, um, for the events, the Glide and Super Glide would be the Sunset Boulevard and Learning Center. The Super G is gonna be that WISP trail. Intermediate and advanced trials will be Roadrunner. The intermediate race will be Muskrat, advanced race will be Squirrel Run, and novice will be that Sunset Boulevard. Um, two of the three magic carpets utilized rather than all three. And uh, Elizabeth, just to be clear for folks, um, since we have designated the intermediate and advanced uh, trial location, 
the novice trials would then also be on Sunset Boulevard, or if we shifted it over to Possum, it would be on Possum, wherever the uh, the competitions would be, correct? Correct, correct. Thank They'll you. be on the same course as the races. It's only differentiated because it's a different course than the race. Um, so this is the schedule um, quickly put together. It is solely based on the 2019-2020 schedule, um, kind of the last time two days were utilized for um, competition. So going through, um, making sure, um, I assume this will probably change once that February 6th date comes out and we see exactly how many athletes are in each event. If any athletes are doubling up, we wanna make sure that they get sufficient time in between events to rest um, and things like that if possible. So that'll definitely be a portion into making a final schedule. Um, this has already been sent off to the Alpine team for review as well. So they could say, hey, this is completely wrong. Like I said, I based this solely off of the last day that there were two days of competition. Um, how many um, events can an athlete enter? Two. Was it, was yeah. it two? Was it three. two plus three. One, one if it's a uh, yeah. unified? Correct. Correct. If those events are available. So for example, the glide super glide skiers can only do two. The novice skiers can only do two because those are the only, there's only two yeah. events offered at that level. Uh, but intermediate and advanced have the option of doing a unified, a third race as a unified race. Um, so here's kind of the Alpine um, time trial schedule. Um, again, once that February 6th date comes in, we will have a more general idea of um, how many athletes are coming from each delegation, as well as the amount of those that will be in time trial. Um, I didn't put anything in novice, and it's just solely based on proximity due to um, uh, due to travel time to the WISP resort. Um, the start time will likely move up with that February 6th time frame, um, but not likely to move late much later than 4 30 4 45 due to um lunch and uh opening ceremonies and then the glide super glide um due to a uh, projected low and in, um involvement will be on monday for their time trial so we're looking to only have the novice and the um intermediate and advanced time trials on sunday Um, the staging process is the same as last year. The coaches and partners will escort the athletes to the staging area at the top of the race. Staging volunteers will check in each athlete and partner um, at the scheduled competition time. The staging volunteer sends the athletes to the course for the first run. And then the coach will escort, coach escorts will go to the end of the race course to wait for those athletes. The coaches and partners escorting the athletes back to the staging area for the second run same process going down for the second run and the coach escort meeting at the um, end of the race. After the second race, coaches and partners escort the athletes to the awards area, remove the skis and poles and take athletes to the awards staging area and are there to support the athlete during the awards presentation. Um, I actually don't know if we have a slide for this, Steve, but um, awards for Alpine will be in the McHenry Lodge um, on a much smaller scale than the um, opening ceremonies, but something very um, comparable so that what was shown previously, um, think about a half of what's going to be used for opening ceremonies, uh, um, uh, using about a quarter to a third total of McHenry Lodge um, for awards, for Alpine awards, um, whereas Snowshoe Awards will be over um, by their course. Um, the escorts for the alpine skiing, um, again, you're able to talk with them um, when escorting them to the uh, staging area and coach them, encourage them, absolutely. Um, but once the athlete enters the race course area, coaching is prohibited during the competition while an athlete is within the boundaries of the race course. Only general cheering and encouragement is allowed. Any specific help or directions 
even green yellow we can decipher different types of might not specifically be red blue left right um for the skiers but no code words or anything like that either um any specific help or directions during the competition while an athlete is within the boundaries of the race uh race course may lead to the athlete being disqualified yeah one of the things as elizabeth alluded to there um we talked about this at our classroom uh, alpine training session, and we we've noticed this in other sports of, you know, the you can encourage um, while they're on the course, um, but the officials have wised up to some of the, um, um, I guess, creative ways that coaches have got around that. And if there is a timed sequence of commands or cheering, such as go, go when it, when they see an athlete turning or making a turn when a, when the word go and if it's at a repetitive kind of um aspect um we have we have noticed that so again we don't want to disqualify anybody you guys know what we're talking about here um just be really encouraging and let the athletes do what they do once they get on the course and showcase their skills um head coaches meeting um, well, I will not be at um, Summer Games, Melissa Anger, the other sports director. Um, oh, no, will... no, no. You will be at Summer Games. You may oh, not be at win Winter Games. Winter Games, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Melissa Anger uh, will most likely be taking over these types of responsibilities for me. Um, she's already making me work for it with basketball, with her scheduling. So don't worry, guys. Um, just to update anything in regards to the Alpine competition, um, the main one being scheduled Monday, uh, Monday morning around 9, 9, 10, um, where to be determined, it's probably going to be in one of those uh, meeting rooms over by the control center, um, just exactly which one is unknown at this time. Um, and others to be communicated at a later date if we have to squeeze one in Sunday evening after time trials um, or another one Tuesday morning, Monday evening, things like that. That'll definitely be communicated once that is decided. And then oh, we do have something with the awards flow. Like I said, this will be in um, the McHenry Lodge. Um, so the escorts will bring athletes from the competition area to the awards area. Um, coaches and our family members are to not take athletes to the awards area or anywhere else. We need to ensure the entire division arrives together so awards can move along effectively and smoothly. Skis will be placed on the ski racks near the lodge. Escorts will check in the athlete division into awards. A coach or registered delegation member, or sorry, delegation volunteer should be in the awards area to cheer the athlete or athletes and take responsibility for the athlete following the awards. Note, coaches and other delegation volunteers are not permitted in the awards staging area unless specifically asked to come in by the awards director, who is Anna McCauley or management personnel or one of the awards volunteers. Please do not crowd around entrance to the awards area. It only makes an already congested situation worse. Um, we are accommodating for seating um, at the awards. So if you want to try to be front and center for your athlete to see, absolutely. Um, but we wanna make sure that they are running smoothly so that if, especially if an athlete is um, uh, running another race that day, we want to make sure that they are there or if it's an awards right before lunch we want to make sure everyone's fed on time and then kind of miscellaneous um spectators will need to be prepared to be distanced from athletes coaches and delegation members um there will be some area um probably in the yurts for um open on sunday for um just general spectators. Um, will the McHenry room be open for um, yeah, spectators yeah, the, as well? Yeah, the, the McHenry room will be open. Um, you know, a lot of times in the past, people have gone outside of the McHenry house or the McHenry lodge um, right there at the base of the hills to see. There'll be some walking areas um, if you exit out the McHenry to go and see the glide and super glide. Um, as well as towards the base of the mountain to see the athletes at the finish line, cheer them on and see them coming down the mountain. But um, there is some, you know, some seating areas and things like that um, for general spectators. 
um, in the McHenry Lodge um, based on space availability. Again, on um, Monday and Tuesday, uh, we need to make sure that everyone has space to eat their meals. And again, as Elizabeth referred to back in the, the if you're looking up at the mountain, um, kind of towards the right um, will be where the awards operations will be, uh, generally up against the, the glass, kind of a little bit going towards the right of the McHenry Lodge. But um, yeah, there'll be some space available there um, for spectators. But it still will be limited, um, and especially if they are in um, intermediate, there's really no likely that they will be able to see the um, athletes performing um, or in their race um, unless they are on the mountain themselves. Um, so very limited. Um, and then uh, one last kind of thing. For anyone that needs a helmet check for certification to receive that special Olympic sticker, or if they need a new one, if that green one's coming off, we have the uh, silver ones. Please have that athlete bring the helmet to uh, Whitetail for On Snow on February 11th. Um, for those attending the On Snow training, if this session is canceled or you're not planning to attend, this will need to be done prior to any time trials run at WIST. So please make sure that that's kind of built into your time if you do need a sticker on a helmet yeah and just to clarify even um as as elizabeth said if if the green ones are coming off the green ones really are i want to say they're no good at one point it was certified with the green ones what the competition management personnel will be looking for is the newer silver ones um so even though you have a green one they'll be looking for those silver ones so as coaches for those um, who need those stickers just uh make sure that um they have those again as elizabeth said either we can check those helmets on the 11th at whitetail or at wisp upon arrival yeah um, and we'll we'll need to designate we'll share this at the at the pre-competition webinar where exactly at what at wisp we don't have that designated or figured out right now so right. we'll let you know at the pre-competition webinar. Yep. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Are all MIPS uh, helmets legal to wear now, or is it something else that we have to look for? Yeah, I, I don't remember the exact. It's the, it's the, uh, it's the R, uh, RS 2013 certification is still what's in effect. Yeah. So there's a little um, thing that the manufacturer puts on the helmet um that it, RS 2013 correct okay, okay. yeah yeah and it's, it's that, the same it's, thing that's been in place it, 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 the standard hasn't changed since it was implemented yeah and for any new coaches it's a very small sticker and it's either normally um in the back back side of the helmet or near the ear hole um or, or ears um but uh, we know where to look for it, but if you have any questions, again, um, you can reach out to Elizabeth. Um, and again, um, as we always do, highly recommend you come out on the 11th. Um, but we we did check some helmets there on the on January 7th, mm -hmm. and um, just want to make sure everyone's in compliance there. But yeah, if any questions, just just let us know, and um, Elizabeth can send out. I think in one of the previous last years webinars we had a little uh, picture of it or indicated that so yeah good question Richard um this this was a combined slide deck um, that we made for tonight so I'm going to breeze through all of the snowshoeing information um if you are interested in that or have family members or other athletes um, etc um and they're looking for snowshoeing information obviously direct them to their snowshoeing coach but um, um back it up one bud oh oh my bad yep <laughs> um so again we have shared again um we want to be proactive and, and sharing a lot of information so um these are some upcoming additional um, webinar sessions and input sessions sharing of information um receiving suggestions and, and addressing questions so obviously we've had the uh, snowshoeing and alpine uh meetings tonight Next week, we have one for the heads of delegation. Uh, and again, that one, um, no need for you guys. And specifically, we don't need you guys or want you guys on that one, um, unless you are also a head of delegation. Um, that one's uh, basically only for the heads of delegation members. 
um, to join that session. There's nothing special, uh, that kind of stuff, but we just want to make sure that our audience is, is who we need on those. Um, the pre-competition webinars, again, hopefully this isn't news, but uh, in case you've missed it in a previous uh, communication, uh, for you guys, here's Alpine Coaches, February 20th from 6 to 7 is the pre-competition webinar. Um, and then we have other scheduled uh, briefing sessions. Uh, we talked about the one for the heads of delegation on January 26th. We'll also have one for them right prior to the game, such as for you as a pre-competition, kind of be the pre-competition webinar for the HODs, uh, February 16th. And then we also have um, designated one, as we did with during COVID, as we were getting back with um, some new information, we thought it was very valuable to do something similar here uh, as a new venue. Uh, so athletes and families, um, partners, anybody, anybody and everybody can join this one, but it's designated for athletes and families on February 21st. So all the links are here. Again, the slide deck will be shared and posted on the coaches resource page. Um, and again, um, hopefully this isn't news to anybody, um, but these are the links. Um, this one is the one you guys would go to as Alpine Coaches, um, a direct link to the Alpine portion of our coaches resource page on our, on our main website. Um, again, it's, it's specifically designed for coaches, but it's open to the public. There's no special code or anything else. Anybody can go to those sites and, and look at the information. Again, that's where the slide deck will be posted as well as the recording to this webinar session. Um, and again, um, as we look to see if there's any questions coming in or suggestions, um, I know Mike was shaking his head, looks like we've addressed anything um, at this point, but um, this is the time to ask questions, give suggestions. Um, and Richard, I now see that you texted me uh, privately about the helmets question. So when I was presenting, I didn't see that come in. So hopefully that addressed your question. Not a problem. You got it. Gotcha. So um, this is the time, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, if you have questions, suggestions, um, let us know. Um, again, uh, we've done one site visit. We're looking to do another site visit um, coming up in February to get everything dialed in, take another look at the courses and uh, an assessment there. Um, but again, I, I commend our, our entire uh, staff and management team and, and Alpine management personnel for all of their efforts. Um, it's always a challenge going to a new facility, new operations and everything, and not just doing the same old, same old. Um, so we also appreciate your patience as coaches, um, your time tonight. Um, if there's no other questions, if things come up and you say, hey, after thinking about that, hey, Elizabeth, what the heck are you guys doing here? Or, hey, I have a suggestion here. Um, you know, we have uh, the contacts here. Um, hopefully everyone has Elizabeth's email. Um, she will be working up to Winter Games, although not available at Winter Games, uh, to make sure you guys are all uh, informed of, of anything coming up. But don't hesitate to reach out uh, collectively. Uh, we're in this all together to make the best experience for yourselves, ourselves, most importantly, the athletes and partners, as well as the families to give them a great experience. So, Steve, um, Steve, yeah, quick, quick question. Are you done? Uh, I guess I am now, George. <laughs> uh, at opening at opening ceremony, we'll be will we be watching the searching parade from inside or will we be going outside i'm um, still to be determined george we're still um at looking at the possibilities uh for those of you who may not have been there before um similar to what we did at whitetail is the torch um coming down the mountain with the flares um that will be you'll still be seated inside you should be able to see it coming down the mountain if in fact that happens um, and we're kind of doing a, a two-way torch, if you will. If the parade down the mountain comes, we'll have a torch coming through the McHenry Lodge, as well as potentially having one come down the mountain, meeting out by the cauldron, and then the cauldron will be lit outside, hopefully right in front of the window, so that everyone can see that um, the possibility may exist that uh, people can walk out, but to get everybody in a timely and organized fashion 
out of the McHenry Lodge out to see the cauldron in the in the evening in the dark with snow and ice. Um, we at this time we'll we'll look at that, but we need to plan on being inside. Are you done, George? I am. Thank you. <laughs> um, again, guys, we're we're all in this together. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time. We hope you found this informative and worth your time. And Mike, yeah, uh, see, uh, Mike, uh, Mike Marin, you unmuted. Did you have something you wanted to add? Uh, I was just going to say thanks for the presentation. Oh. Really helpful. Thank appreciate you. that, Mr. Marin. Uh, and then also, just so folks aren't wondering, um, Elizabeth, do you want to share why you won't be with us <laughs> at Winter Games? <laughs> yeah, so, it's a good um, thing. so I got married last March and we delayed our honeymoon and we just happened to delay it to February 27th through March 20th, <laughs> through March 12th. So they hired me and I said, oh, by the way, <laughs> I, I can't go. So it is a good reason it's my honeymoon and we planned it around um oriole spring training so we'll be down at disney and uh, sarasota which is why we picked that time it was not specific to miss my first big event with special olympics thank you but as she said there will be payback yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but again um, yeah I, I, the only thing else i would have is Thank you so much. Again, we are looking for any suggestions, whatever. Just keep in mind, the sooner we hear suggestions or uh, concerns to address, the more likely we're going to be able to address them. Um, uh, holding them off until like the, a couple of days before the games makes it difficult to do. But thank you so much. We are thrilled to be both back at WISP uh, in Maryland for winter games and to continue our relationship with Whitetail for our on snow training. Uh, and um, I uh, look forward to seeing many of you on the 11th. Uh, and if not there, then uh, at Winter Games itself. Good deal. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Good night.